Okay, guys, now we're back to the uh, organometallic section, right? And we're doing uh, the palladium catalyzed reactions. And we just finished the heck reaction and the problem set. And now we're on to the other type of reactions. So, um, again, I, I just want to keep saying this because I know if you happen to jump into this video first or something, you do not need to memorize the steps for all the reactions I'm going to show you. Okay? You just got to get the general idea of what's happening. All right? So, Let's take a look at this next one. So the next series of reactions is all palladium based. So that means that we're going to have a substrate and we're going to have an organo metallic group and they will join together as long as palladium is around. Okay. Now remember we I showed you that with the heck reaction you have a substrate but this side here is usually an alkene. Whereas now, this is going to be an R group, usually a double bond carbon, that has a metal on it. And so, these two join together to give a new reaction product. Now, depending upon, remember, this is R with a leaving group, and this is R with a metal. And what defines the following three is what that metal is, okay? So, if it's Suzuki, if that's the reaction that we're dealing with, then the metal is a borate. It's BOH2. Now, boron isn't really a true metal. It's like a, you know, a quasi-metal. But uh, for the purposes of this chapter, we think of it as a metal, okay? It's a metalloid, right? So it's, it has metal character to it. All right. The next one is going to be that we'll talk about as the Stille reaction. And that's where we have a tin. So we're having some sort of tin. It's actually tributyl tin that we're going to see, and that's what defines the Stille condition. So if the metal here is borate, then it's Suzuki. If it's tin, then it's Stille. Okay? And then finally, the last one is the Sanagashira. Sanagashira. Okay? And for this one, we're dealing with copper. So if the metal is a copper, then it's a Sanagashira reaction. All right. Now, what we're going to find in these reactions I'm going to show you is that there are a few key bullet points. Um, so, for example, uh, the first thing I want to point out, and it doesn't matter which one I show you, the following points are always going to take place. The first thing is uh, we're going to have what's called a transligand. Okay, transligand. And what that means is that we're going to exchange ligands from the metal. So, metals will be swapping its ligands. And you'll see what I mean. I guess I'll just point out the bullets and then we'll go through it. The other thing is stereochem is maintained. So what you'll see in all these reactions uh, maintained is that no matter what reaction we're dealing with, we're always going to wind up having the stereochem the same. So if this is a cis and this is a cis, then they will join cis and cis, okay? If trans, trans, same thing. If it's cis, trans, and so on. So the stereochem is always maintained in these reactions. Uh, sorry. Maintained. Okay? So we maintain the stereochemistry. I don't, I don't like to, you know how sometimes you look at a word and it doesn't seem like it's right? So I'm going to write preserved. <laughs> Just change the word. I don't like maintained. Maintained. I don't know. Anyway, so that's the second thing. Stereochem is preserved. Okay? Uh, the next thing is that in this case, the double bonds do not break. Do not break. So remember how with the heck reaction, that when we get to the intermediate, we're actually breaking the double bond, right? So if we went through this heck reaction, the intermediate, there's no double bond in the middle. So this one lost its double bond. Well, in these reactions, you don't break the double bond, okay? So we're never going to break the double bond. It stays intact from start to finish, okay? And sometimes we'll do something known as transmetallation. And in particular, we'll see one example of this soon, okay? 
So there's something called the transmetallation, and we'll see that in just a few minutes. These are the key bullet points that we're going to focus in on as we go through the mechanisms. Okay. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this sheet. Now you guys have this sheet. Okay. I made this last year, and so I'm just going to reuse it. It's the same. It's just as good. And so the number three you can ignore. This just simply is listing it out because of the mega review sheet. Okay, but I like just working from here, and this is going to be basically the same. I might do some changes, but probably not many. Anyway, so you can see this. There are two packets online. One is a question packet, and the other is just like a, a theory packet, and that's the one that has this page. Okay, so what we see here is that um, the first thing is a very general idea. And so the first thing I want to point out is that, like I said, the, the key here is stereochem is maintained. Now, here's an example of that. So if we have a cis substrate and we have a cis metal organometallic group, then when we all we're doing is replacing this and that and connecting the two together. So we're making this connection here and notice that the stereochem is exactly the same, right? So if this is trans and this is cis, then at the end, we're going to replace the CL with the metal take them out and connect the other two carbons together, right? So here's a, let's say a blue carbon and here's a red carbon. So here's the red carbon and here's the blue carbon. Whoop, here's the blue carbon. Okay, all we're doing is connecting them together and getting rid of the CL and the metal. Notice it stays the same stereochem, trans and cis. And so that's the key, okay? Stereochem is maintained. Now here's the general mechanism. And this is probably all I need to go over with you guys, but I do go over the other details because they tend to focus on them on as an exam question. Now, again, you do not need to know the mechanism, but you do need to be familiar with what's happening, okay? General ideas. So, in this case, we start up here, and we're about to add this vinyl chloride into the palladium. So, this is, of course, an oxidative addition, right? Two negative groups, a Cl and a carbon are going to connect to the palladium. Notice that it's the carbon connecting to palladium, not the double bond, right? We're not drawing an arrow like that, because then it wouldn't be negative, it would be neutral. But we're making a carbon touch it. So that means it's negative. So this is an oxidative addition. And then after that, what we're doing is we're bringing in the second piece. So I guess, uh, which one am I using? So I'm using the first one, the top one. So we're going to take now this organometallic group and bring it in next. Okay, so we're going to add it in, and I have it cis, so I, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that in just a moment, but what's going to happen now is where this palladium is going to start to come close to the carbon that holds the metal, while the metal is coming close to the CL. And we're about to go through a process known as transligands. We're going to swap our pieces. So palladium is going to grab the carbon to the right of it, right? So this green carbon, and that's what we actually see. I could show you right here, this green carbon, while the CL, this ligand, is going to grab the metal, and they're going to leave together. So that's called the transligand, and all we're doing is swapping pieces from each other. We're taking, so this is called the transligand. We're swapping ligand pieces. Now, from the point of view of this step, actually, let me go back a moment. So this step here is where we're having not the, a negative. This is an association because what we're doing is we're actually just having them come close together. Neither one of them is bringing, uh, um, a, well, actually, you know, I mean, I guess this is a little bit tricky because it looks like an oxidative addition. Like the palladium is getting this um, green carbon to come onto it, but it's actually not. It's just associating. At this point, it's just coming very close to it. But it's not an oxidative addition. The first step's oxidative addition, but it doesn't happen again. So it's a little misleading, okay? That's why I did this as a dotted line. So it's not truly making that connection over to the palladium yet. It's just coming close by. Anyway, so here it is. And now from here, we go up to this point, which is our transligand exchange. And, in, and at this point, where the palladium gets a full connection to the um, uh, carbon, you can't say it's an oxidative addition here because it is in one way an oxidative addition because the palladium gets the carbon connection, but notice it lost a CL. 
So it's an oxidative addition and a reductive elimination in one shot. So there is no name for this one. And so what you could think of it as is just...